A big thank you goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. bit of a visitor while I've been away in Tonquin Valley. I had a mouse in here once before. I lived in here for a few months, uh, but eventually I had to get rid of it. Hopefully, um, hopefully he hasn't set up a home in my, in my van here. I noticed some of my cliff bars have been chewed on. <laughs> I've been searching around for a little while now and I must admit I'm having a bit of a hard time. As beautiful as it is, the, uh, the aspen are very uniform. So, you know, unless you can find one tree that has a bit of character or stands out from the rest as a center of interest, uh, it's gonna be more or less uh, a pattern shot. Um, now I am on a little bit of a hill here looking down, which is quite nice because uh, you get some of that autumn color. I don't know if you guys can probably just see it there. Autumn color at the top here. So uh, perhaps I can get something where I'm looking down and not including the, uh, the sky. Um, something else that I'm thinking of trying is uh, just using a really shallow depth of field and maybe focus on a tree that's way in the background so that everything around it is, uh, is quite blurry, if that makes sense. So uh, those are the types of things I have in my head right now and uh, I'm, I'm looking for a, a situation where I might be able to do that. Um, the other thing I'm a little bit worried about is uh, actually the only time I've ever seen uh, grizzly bears is in this forest <laughs> and I forgot my bear spray. <laughs> I, I'm sure I'll be fine but uh, yeah it's weird uh, the only time I've seen bear is actually in this forest and of course as you're walking along sometimes they can be hidden in the shrubs below and uh, you know, you, you surprise them. That's the, the worst thing you can do. Right. Um, there's absolutely nobody else in here. It's, it's just fantastic. All right. I think I might have found a composition. <laughs> uh, in between each of these uh, aspen, there's a number of conifers growing. So the shapes are quite different than these, uh, these trunks going straight up. So we have these white trunks and then every now and then you'll have a, a small evergreen kind of breaking the monotony of, of the pattern. And I found one just down here that's quite small and it has a few leaves stuck in it. Uh, so I've tried to surround it with uh, you know, white uh, trunks and then we just have the, uh, the evergreen in the center uh, compositionally, it's a little static. I've put the, the evergreen right in the very center and I'll probably crop it one way or another, I'm not sure. I'm shooting at a uh, wide open at F4 because I just want the evergreen to be sharp and I want everything else to be somewhat uh, unsharp around it, just blurry, so it's not dis distracting from the evergreen. The problem is if I, sh if I stop down to say F16 or whatever and try and get everything sharp, then uh, the evergreen just kind of gets lost uh, in all of the, those white lines. Um, the other thing I'm trying to do is it looks much better when it's uh, in front of uh, a few of the white trees. If, if I have any of the background, which in this case is quite dark, uh, it doesn't show up as well, it seems. Anyway, I'm gonna keep playing around with this uh, I just keep moving over a few inches either way just to try and line it up with some trees in the background 
and to get some nice uh, shapes in the foreground. Because the idea is that you want uh, the viewer's attention to go right to that tree. And actually now and then the light uh, is coming out. So it actually helps a little bit. We have a little bit of kind of backlit side, side lighting, if that makes sense. The sun's over here and my composition's right here. And you'll notice that the yellow in the trees right now looks fantastic when we have uh, the sun backlighting it. And actually, as I look up, there is a little bit of blue sky. I've also noticed that in this forest, most of these trees aren't uh, really that white. They're more of a, 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 a tan or a yellowy color. And the ones on the outskirts seem to be wider. I don't know if that's because maybe the sun's bleached them a bit more. I'm not sure. I have to admit, I'm, uh, I'm having a really <laughs> hard time this morning. Could be because I just got out of uh, you know, doing a, a four or five day trip and I'm not that motivated or uh, just having a hard time. The trees, as I said, are absolutely beautiful, uh, but it's just, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's pretty messy. So what I've decided to do is do a little bit of a intentional camera movement or ICM. And uh, sometimes I, I enjoy doing it. It's just a, a neat way to uh, photograph uniform trees. There's no set way of doing this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my 70 to 200 F4 lens on. I'm stopping it all the way down to F22, uh, ISO 31, and that gives me a, uh, about half a second. And, what I usually do is, I mean, even with this lens racked out at 200 at half a second, even if you're just hand holding it without the image stabilization on, uh, it's still going to be quite blurry, but I want it to be quite intentional. The idea is to have it blurry enough that it looks like you did it on purpose. If it's just a little bit blurry, then it just looks like a mistake. Uh, you know, some of the images I might twist like this or, or just go up and down. Uh, these types of trees with these with the white bark uh, are very nice when you do a little bit of uh, panning up and down. So I'll just uh, hold it for a split second and then go up and, uh, and see how that works out. Of course, every image is going to be different. Some are gonna be better than others and hopefully you get one that you, uh, you, know, that you really like. So, uh, you know, in this case, I wanna get some of the yellow and the aspen trunks. So I'll try and uh, do my movement within that range. I don't really want white sky in my frame, so I'll try and keep that out. So it's just a matter of uh, focusing on anything you want. doesn't really matter. Something in the background, finding somewhat of a composition, pressing the shutter and up, and there we have, you probably can't see this, but uh, oops, there we have some kind of abstract. And it looks even more abstract when I don't have uh, my glasses on. <laughs> kind of like Monet. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. If you're in the market for a professional looking website, then look no further. Squarespace has some of the classiest website designs that I've come across. A Squarespace website is easy to set up and intuitive to use. Squarespace's all-in-one platform is an exceptional choice for photographers wanting to showcase their masterpieces to the world and also sell their services and products. Want a free trial? Head over to squarespace.com and give it a go. And if you like it, use the code 
Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. That's right. Go to squarespace.com, Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. by no means an expert at intentional camera movement uh, photography or in my case jiggling my camera throughout the 20 odd years that I've been taking photographs I think I've probably done intentional camera movement photography perhaps a dozen times and usually it's because I just can't think of anything else to photograph or I'm just having a hard time uh, finding compositions now on this particular day uh, the ICM works great I was in a bit of a, a creative rut and uh, I did a little bit of ICM and it, it got me right out of that and then I started looking for uh, you know my normal compositions. So in the couple of hours that I was wandering around the forest I took maybe 60 or 70 images using uh, intentional camera movement and what I found worked best for me is uh, you know I'd find somewhat of a composition that I think might work, I would use an appropriate uh, shutter speed. The great thing is that you can look at the results straight away on the back of your camera and if it didn't quite work, if the shutter speed was too fast or too slow, then I would just adjust accordingly. And it worked really well for me. The results that I got, I was actually quite happy with. I got maybe two or three images that uh, I thought worked really well. As I said in my little blurb there throughout the video, I think with the aspen trees it works really well if you pan up and down so that it creates these kind of uh, surrealistic painterly uh, lines uh, vertically uh, throughout the frame. And then of course when you have the, uh, the full color in the background it just adds that punch of color that uh, really makes these images quite interesting. Now if I show you this image here this particular image doesn't really work because it almost looks like a mistake. I haven't blurred it enough. Again, as I said in the uh, little blurb there, you really want to use a shutter speed that's appropriate, that uh, makes it look like you've, you've done this on purpose and, and not by accident. So if you are in a bit of a creative rut, I would highly recommend trying a little bit of ICM or jiggling your camera. And for those of you that are just getting into photography and don't know about f-stops and shutter speeds and the functions of your camera, this is a great way to explore your camera and try out the different functions so you learn about how to use f-stops and shutter speeds. Ultimately, if you learn how to use your camera and all its settings, then your results will be more predictable and more consistent. As I mentioned, I did take a couple more images after I did a little bit of ICM and got out of my little creative rut there. And I'll finish the video with those two images. Right, this was a short one, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up if you did. And as always, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content of my channel. All right, everybody, until next week. Bye for now.